You're listening to episode 303. Welcome to Transforming Missions podcast, providing you with insights and resources you need to lead a movement of Jesus followers. Tim, welcome to our next to the last episode in this Rethinking Advent podcast series. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Sarah. How did we get here already? It's crazy, isn't it? We're standing at the end of 2023, and it feels like we blinked, and all of a sudden, here we are. And if you're feeling anything like that, I think this episode will encourage you in these final weeks of the year. Are we ready to dive in? Well, I think we are. What are we rethinking today? (laughs) Just the birth of Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) So we're tackling something small today, right? Yes, Last last week, we were rethinking life. Mm-hmm. This week, we're rethinking the Messiah's birth. We just take on small challenges, don't you? Leave it to a woman to take on the world. <laughs> oh, I see. I walked right into that one. That's not what I said. <laughs> yes, you did. So several years ago, Marcus Borg wrote the phrase, seeing Jesus again for the first time. I actually think that might have been, it was either the title of an article or a book too, I think. But that's really where we want to focus today. Yes. What if the birth of Jesus is less about celebrating and more about seeing? What if the incarnation is both a reminder of God's reign in Christ and the birth of a whole new order of love and justice that Jesus brings to our world? So rewind to the first episode in this Advent series if you want to focus on on that. So what if seeing Jesus again for the first time is the greatest gift you could ask for this Christmas? What might happen if our eyes were open to see again for the first time the power of the Incarnation for us and for our world? So let's start with the birth of um, Jesus being foretold to Mary and then turn to Luke 2 and the birth of Jesus to see if we can be open to seeing again for the first time the power of the Incarnation. So Sarah, will you read the scripture to help us focus? Wasn't that the previous podcast? (laughs) I'm sorry. Yes, here is the scripture. But it was the previous podcast. It was. Rethinking our focus. Head back to that episode if you want to listen to that. Okay, here we go. Luke 1. I'm getting punchy. Luke 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Let's look at a familiar um, narrative, this this story with fresh eyes. The account of Mary um, that you just read, Sarah, is not just an Advent story. It's a testament to encountering the divine in the midst of the ordinary. So let's look at this passage again and seeking to see Jesus again for the first time, to borrow from Borg's phrase. 
in Nazareth, a place not marked by great prestige, the divine breaks in. So here we meet Mary, a young woman whose life is about to be turned upside down. And the angel Gabriel arrives with a greeting that's truly unsettling. Favored woman, the Lord is with you. Now, this is not flattery. It's a a herald of the extraordinary work God is about to do through her. And then Mary is confused and disturbed. Wouldn't we be the same? Her response is profoundly human and reminds us that divine encounters do not always come with clarity or comfort. There's a mix of surprise, of fear, and of faith. Divine encounters often bring questions, and that's okay. When we're confused and disturbed by something, it can be difficult to see the steps forward. We understand Mary's initial confusion and disturbance upon upon encountering Gabriel. We might react the same when we encounter something unfamiliar or even divine in our daily lives. So consider for a minute a time when you felt unprepared or startled by a new movement of the Spirit, just as Mary was startled by the angel's greeting. Are you willing to embrace the moment of divine disruption to see Jesus again for the first time? And it's a great question. And then the the angel says to Mary, fear not. I always think, Sarah, that in the scripture, when an angel says, fear not, there's something really big about to happen. So this is not a dismissal of Mary's feelings. It's the assurance that God's presence is in the upheaval she faces. Fear not, for you have found favor with God. You know, favor here is not about privilege. It's about participation in God's mission. I think that's important for us to hear, especially at Christmas time. So what encouragement can you find in trusting God's grace despite circumstances or societal expectations? That's a good question to wrestle with. Yes, it is. So here's another one. Mary's question to the angel is logical. How can this happen? She knows the facts of life, if I can say it that way. But the angel speaks of a mystery that transcends biology. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. In this, we're reminded that God's workings are not confined by our understanding. The incarnation, God with us, begins with an act that defies explanation. As people leading people to follow Jesus, there are always questions and uncertainties, much like Mary's question, but how can this happen? So here's another question. What do the questions about the questions and uncertainties make possible, if anything? What do the questions and uncertainties make possible, if anything? Well, the word of God will never fail. Here's the promise that anchors us in the midst of life storms. It's a declaration that what God speaks comes to pass, not because of our capabilities, but because of God's faithfulness. And then finally, we witness Mary's response. I am the Lord's servant. It's in her acceptance that we see the essence of discipleship. It's a surrender, an alignment of her story with God's greater story. So in what ways might a response of servanthood help you to see Jesus again for the first time? In this passage, we are invited to see Jesus anew through the eyes of a young woman who exemplifies faithfulness amidst uncertainty. To see Jesus again for the first time is to encounter the gospel as if we are hearing it for the first time. To be startled, to wonder, to question, and ultimately, to trust in the God who is with us, whose kingdom knows no end. So how might we see Jesus this Christmas if we carry with us the courage to be disturbed, the grace to be puzzled, and the faith to respond as Mary did? May we be open to the Spirit's overshadowing, leading us into the mystery of God who is with us. Sarah, I'm I'm thinking as we've gone gone through this that 
the first episode of Rethinking Advent and Rethinking the Coming of Jesus, that the world was in an upheaval so much that the sun stopped shining, the stars started falling from the sky. Um, and I'm thinking of Mary and and the word of God coming to her. What could be more disturbing than the news that she received? Yet the call upon her life in the midst of that disturbance has us sitting here talking today. Because it was to be prepared for the one who was coming. Now, I know when, when we read that story from Mark, it was about the return of Jesus. And this is about Jesus' first, first arrival. But it doesn't make any difference whether it's the first or the last, in the midst of the upheaval, there's Jesus. That's the Christmas story, isn't it? It sure is. And what a message <laughs> that the world needs to hear today. I don't know anybody who is living in 2023 as we move into 2024 who doesn't need a reminder of that message. So thank you, Tim. And thank you for joining us this week. We shared multiple questions with you this week and would love to hear from you about any of those questions, or perhaps a question that you're asking about this passage. Our invitation to leave us a message over on the show notes page still stands. You can find it at transformingmission.org forward slash 303. One final note today. You'll see two episodes have dropped today, both episodes 303 and 304. They're relatively short, they're related, but separate. So that's why there's two different episodes. And be reminded, who you are is how you lead. Bye for now.